<clears throat> Hello everyone. So I guess this is going to be an exhortation. Prompted by me doing what I am exhorting you to do in this video. <laughs> Um, or in this audio, it's not really going to be a video, but I was just really speaking to the Lord from my heart with some tears accompanying, ac accompanying it. Um, my checkbook has been in the negative for the last week or so and so I've had to go back to eating only stuff that I can purchase with my food stamps and uh, you know microwaving and I really wasn't feeling too well and um, you know I take after my grandma my grandma and I were, have always been a lot alike and um, you know, we are body, soul, and spirit, and uh, on a body level, if I'm not feeling well, if things aren't going, if things are below normal, shall we say, on a body level, um, that has always freaked out my grandma, and it has traditionally always freaked me out, and I really can't afford to let myself be freaked out because I'm homeless and I have no one. And I was just reflecting on how pretty much my whole life I've been alone. And I pretty much just had a conversation with the Lord that was very similar to a conversation I had with him back in 2018. In 2018, before I realized that we were as close as we were to the end, before I realized really my own identity in Christ, um, I remember having this conversation with the Lord and asking him, begging him, begging him to prevent me from having to endure any kind of physical torture or torment. And I pretty much just made that request again because I'm very confident that I can handle things on a soul level I've had to my whole life. And I don't want to be cocky, I don't want to be haughty and be too, you know, be too confident uh, to say that I can handle things on a spiritual level. I'm pretty sure I can, but I know that there's more that I could experience on a spiritual level than what I have, and so I don't want to be putting a challenge out um, but on a body level that's always been where I guess you could say I have been prone to quit when I was 19 years old um, I did something that even surprised myself I ran away and joined the army and I went to army basic training and I was really just running away from home. I was running away from my dysfunctional abusive family and my dysfunctional abusive uh, Nephilim boyfriend. And, um, and it was good. It was good for my self-esteem when I did that. Uh, it built my self-esteem in various ways. But what finally made me um, decide to quit find a loophole and get out was the very, very long road marches. And I stuck it out. We were only a couple weeks away from graduating basic training. I, I made it 
you know, most of the way, but I finally just said, you know what, screw this, because my heart was never in it. Um, my heart was never in it, and I just couldn't, like, physically do the road marches. I would end up behind the entire platoon, and um, I just... You know, I, I, it was a big, it was, it was a huge difficulty for me. And so my prayer in 2008 and my prayer just now was, Lord, please, please prevent me from having to endure any kind of physical torment or torture. Because if there is any area that I could be weakened in terms of quitting, so to speak. It's on a physical level, it's on a body level. The Church of Smyrna will be beheaded and the two witnesses will be killed and we don't know if anything else will be involved now just being killed you know just bing bang boom that, that's one thing but it's something entirely different if there's physical torment and torture involved and I don't know why all of a sudden I guess because I wasn't physically feeling well, like I said, that, that can kind of be a trigger for me. And maybe it's the same for some of you. But this just bubbled up from the, the depths of my heart. And I admitted to the Lord, you know, I said, Lord, I don't want to partner with fear because that's foolish. But I said, Lord, I have to be honest with you. You know, because <laughs> he's all I've ever really had. People, people have come and gone in my life like a revolving door. And, um, I mean, not to say that people haven't been around for years in my life, they have, but a lot of them, um, were, you know, were narcissists, were Nephilim, etc. I mean, I, I had an addiction to those kinds of people. Um, but, you know, just people just come and go, and, and, you know, scripture tells us that the, you know, the love of many will wax cold, and that's being shown prevalent even amongst true Christians, even amongst Fivefold ministers, it seems. And so I was just, you know, telling the Lord this, not that he needs me to tell him anything, but it was just reflecting of, Lord, you know, as far as I know, you know, right? Like, I never asked to exist in the first place. I never asked to be down here. And in some of the spiritual work that I've done, it's it's been kind of apparent that, you know, I was kind of upset when he put me down here. And, um... I've pretty much been miserable the whole time I've been down here, and I pretty much have been alone the whole time I've been down here, and he's all I've really ultimately had. Now, thank God I've had my kitty cat, Tigress, the last decade or so, and she has been such a blessing. She has been such a comfort. She has been the one physical companion that I've had, and I truly do thank God for her pretty much daily. You know, we all have our five, or, you know, our love languages, and she definitely at least meets my love languages of quality time and physical touch. And, you know, when I was first really walking with the Lord, that was a prayer, that was a desire I had a lot, was, you know, Lord, I wish you were here physically. And I just told him that again. I said, Lord, I wish you were here I wish you were here physically where I could just see you and touch you. I 
And I guess I'm crying again. <laughs> I'm just in a vulnerable place right now. And uh, it occurred to me, and I asked him if I had permission to come on here and share this, because that is part of the ministry that he's given me, is to normalize things, to make things be okay, to, uh, you know, experience, or to admit or confess, you know, um, to, to be vulnerable, to show that courage. Now, obviously, he doesn't want me to promote fear, and that is not my intention. I'm not promoting fear, but I am promoting being human. I am, promu I am promoting and advocating for vulnerability and intimacy between you and the Lord. And, you know, a very common coping mechanism is to compartmentalize. And I think I've done that quite a bit in my life. And I'm pretty sure I'm probably doing it now. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is that we need to be in touch. We need to be connected to all aspects of our own heart in order to truly be connected to God. Um, because you can't really be connected to God unless you're connected to yourself first. I, I hope that makes sense. Um, you can't share your heart with someone else, with another party, if you yourself aren't connected to your own heart. I hope that makes sense. You know, like we, we can't just stay in our intellect all the time, you know? And, um, and so I confessed. I said, Lord, I don't want to partner with fear, but I have to tell you how I'm feeling. And I'm feeling scared right now. I'm scared of what's coming, you know? Because, yeah, we all intellectually know, okay, all this stuff is prophesied in scripture and we've got plenty of people telling us the dreams and visions they've had and giving prophecy and words of wisdom and words of knowledge and so on and so forth. And But none of us knows exactly what is ahead of us on each of our own individual paths. And I'm not going to get off topic and go and share you know, stuff from my past right now, but I'm just going to say this, that in my own life, life has very much taught me that your life, your path, chains of events can transpire in such a way that you would have never imagined. Things have happened in my life that I just it just blew my mind just blew my mind I have found myself in some situations scenarios positions in my life at times that were just I'm just gonna just flat out traumatic just traumatic and you know trauma is a spectrum But bottom line, we all know that we're in the tribulation and we are heading for some very traumatic times ahead of us here in the next several years. <laughs> Scripture says perilous times. Traumatic times. And the exhortation that I want to give is if you haven't done so yet, take some time to really comprehensively, thoroughly be honest with yourself about how you feel about being here in the tribulation, being the last generation, and share that with the Lord. There's a difference between partnering with fear 
and just simply sharing with the Lord that maybe you feel a little scared. You have to share it with somebody. And it should be him first and foremost. The Lord was reminding me of how he tells us, he promises us in his word that he will not give us more than we can take. The thing is, is what we think we can take and what the Lord thinks we can take may be two different things. Because as we, as we should all know, the Lord does like to stretch us at times outside of our comfort zones. And so I just pretty much said to him, I said, Lord, as far as I know, I never asked to be here. I never asked to exist. I never asked to be down here on this earth. (laughs) And I never asked to be here in the tribulation as part of the, the last generation. But here I am. It was your will. And here I am. I exist. I'm here. And I'm here now. And I'm here for the tribulation. And I said, so my request is this. Please strengthen me. Please equip me. Please put in me whatever it is that I need to endure whatever it is that is coming my way. And of course, I also asked him to prevent me from having to endure any kind of physical torture or torment. Because that's the one way. If I'm honest with myself, That's the one way that if I was ever to be tempted, if I was ever in any way, shape, or form to be tempted to quit Jesus, to quit God, to quit Yeshua, it would be that way. And even saying that out loud makes me nervous because I know the enemy's listening. But the enemy studies us, you know, from the time we're put down here on this earth. It's not really a secret and it's you know it's not really a a personal secret I mean I think this pretty much probably goes across the board for most people if not all Um, and the Lord reminded me of what he spoke to me back in January this year and it's something that people have been saying to me since the beginning of my walk with the Lord even prior I think actually Even prior, I think. Um, I mean, I mean, I did have some level of relationship with the Lord growing up. So I mean, whatever. But my whole life, I've had people telling me that I'm strong, that I'm stronger than I know, that I'm stronger than I realize. And for a while, I just wrote it off as just, oh, that's just something that people say. And yeah, in some in some cases, it is. But I've had people like speak that over me like as like a word of knowledge like prophecy and the Lord said to me this January this past January he said to me you are a pillar of strength that's the responsibility that I have in the kingdom and it's a, it's a pretty heavy, weighty responsibility. Because what he means by that is he's telling me that I need to be strong, not just for myself. And, and of course, I, I get the strength from him. But I have to be strong for other people. And that's why he told me to wait until I kind of calm down a little bit before I hit record because not that being vulnerable makes you weak but a lot of people perceive it that way and he doesn't want that to be vulnerable is very 
courageous. It requires a lot of strength. And I know that. And I know I possess that. He, that's how he's made me. But the exhortation here is this. Start processing it now if you haven't started already. I don't know exactly what's going to happen when, in terms of the, the, the big picture, the macro. What I believe right now, I believe the Lord has told me that technically the fourth seal has been opened and we're just waiting for it to manifest in the natural. And we know what comes after the fourth seal, the fifth seal. There's about to be a lot of death in various ways. If you haven't taken the time to really assess your own heart, that's what I'm hearing the Lord say is assess. Sit down and really scrutinize your own heart right now as to, okay, start imagining different scenarios if you haven't begun already but start like and I'm, I'm not saying again I'm not promoting fear but just start imagining different scenarios just to kind of like test your own heart of like okay if I was in this scenario what would I do what would my decision be what would I do what could I cope with what could I handle because that's part of the psychological preparation that is needed. And psychological preparation is a form of strength. And discussing things with the Lord and praying, you know, well, I mean, that, that is prayer. Um, but if you're honest now with yourself, that can guide your prayer life. That can guide your prayer life. And your prayer life, your conversation with the Lord, your connection to the Lord through your own heart, that is your strength. That is your strength. That is where your strength will come from in the tribulation. That is our strength as Christians, period, regardless of what you know what what's going on but especially now in the tribulation and in the future <sighs> I'm just going to say this it would make sense to me that if someone has had some kind of dream or vision of walking up to a guillotine, the Lord may be telling you that you're a part of the church of Smyrna. And that that, you know, may be how your life will end here on this earth. That's what would make sense to me. So I'm just putting that out there for whoever it may apply to. That's for you and the Lord to discuss. <sighs> but as far as those who, like me, believe that the Lord has been telling you that you're part of the two witnesses... It tells us flat out in scripture that they will be killed. Personally, I really hope. I mean, selfishly, I, I really hope that it's just a quick, just, you know, boom, done. 
execution and not some drawn out thing. And I'm sorry to be such a Debbie Downer, but uh, this is reality of where we're, what we're facing here, you know? Um, I mean, depending on who you are, depending on what category of people you're in, you know? Um, but I don't know, this just was on my heart. This just bubbled up to the surface tonight and um, it's relevant. It's relevant to, to those who it's relevant to. And one of my purposes is to encourage the two witnesses. And I don't know if this is all that encouraging, um, but I know it's edifying to just prompt you, to exhort you to start processing this. And even those who aren't part of the two witnesses, there is the Church of Smyrna. They will be beheaded. Start processing. Something the Lord recently told me that I added to that little chart I made recently is the Lord told me that the Church of Philadelphia, which does include the two witnesses, that they are targeted individuals, which basically means they're hunted. They're hunted on a spiritual level, but at some point they're going to be hunted in the natural. And I know, I know I'm not the first to address this, I know I'm not going to be the last to address this, but here on my channel, in my ministry, I just feel inspired right now to just address this. Start really, really being honest with yourself. Start searching your heart and sharing it with the Lord. Start pouring your heart out to the Lord processing this with him with him include him in the conversation because that's the healthy way to cope pretending that you have no percentage of fear is just in my opinion foolish Because at some point, it's just human nature to snap. If, if, if you're not coping with something, if you're not dealing with something, if you're not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you're not accepting something, if you're not embracing something, then what you actually have is a stance of opposition to it. So I've talked about this, these concepts before on my channel. I'm gonna bring him up again. Um, so when I would, when I went to graduate school for marriage and family therapy, we got into some pretty deep stuff, and I don't know what category this would fall under: psychology, philosophy, whatever. But there's a difference between a connected separation and a separated connection. And that's, it's, it's a fancy way of just saying that if you don't deal with something, if you don't embrace it, if you don't accept it, you're setting yourself up for psychological failure. And if you're, you know, which pretty much equals failure, period, you know, um, for the most part, overall, generally speaking, if not always. <laughs> um, You need to start processing if you haven't already. And even if you have, this is just a reminder to kind of like revisit, see where you're at, check in with the Lord, discuss it with him, tell him what you think, tell him what you feel, tell him what you feel, especially. And be brutally honest with yourself and with him of Lord, you know, 
if I was in such and such scenario, I don't know what I would do or I don't trust myself in that situation, Lord, or if I was in such and such situation, that's the, that's the one situation that I would be tempted, Lord, to quit and I don't want to quit. And let that guide your prayer life of just, you know, making your petitions known, making your requests known. That's the best way that, that I have found. That, that, that's the best counsel that I can give because that's, that's, not, that's all I know to do. I know what scenario that I could be tempted to quit and I'm asking him for mercy to prevent me from being in that scenario. But I'm also asking him to strengthen me and equip me and just put in me whatever it is I need to do whatever it is that he wants me to do. Whatever his will is. And, you know, we know, we have these cutesy little Christian lingo phrases of, you know, where we're, we're God guides, God provides, and, you know, that's not just, like, financially, you know, that's, like, psychologically, right? Like, but what I'm hearing the Lord say right now, thank you, Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit, is... You know, there's a reason why Yeshua told us to ask, seek, knock. And months ago, I addressed this, I think, on my community page months and months ago. And I'm just going to remind everybody again. I know I've got a lot of new subscribers over the last several months this year. Um, but the Lord takes it very, very seriously. You know, our God is a God of order. He's a God of organization. He's a God of order. And there are rules. And he follows his own rules. And um, everybody, everything abides by his rules. I'm debating going off on a side tangent right now. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll circle back to that. But bottom line we are told very specifically to, appro to approach the throne of grace boldly with confidence and to make our petitions known. Yeshua told us to ask, seek, knock. He gave us the parables about being persistent. So assess your own heart, take an evaluation, take stock, Assess your strengths and your weaknesses. And let that inform, let that guide your prayer life. Let that inform and guide what you bring boldly to the throne of grace as your request, as your petition, and then keep bringing it. Ask, seek, and knock. over and over and over persistently as the Lord told us to. <sighs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. What I'm hearing the Lord remind me of right now is the verse that says that he will give us a way out from under every temptation. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, he's so good. He's so faithful. That is encouraging right there. That is reassuring and encouraging right there. Thank you, God. He will give us a way out from under every temptation. <sighs> Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. <laughs> 
Oh, our God is an awesome God. He reigns with love. <sighs> he reigns with love. He loves us. I'm hearing him say right now that he will not forsake us or abandon us, right? He said he would be with us till the end of the age. for your presence, God. Thank you. So the exhortation is this. Get into the secret place with him. Get into your prayer closet. Get into the secret place. That special place where only he can meet you. And be so completely honest with yourself and with him. Cultivate that intimacy with him now. Because that is your strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. More than conquerors. He's speaking to me now personally more than before I hit record. <laughs> and I know that that's for your benefit, for your edification. These are all verses that I memorized and hid in my heart as a babe in Christ. And he's just reminding them to, of me, re reminding me of them all right now. He is who he says he is, and he keeps his word. Everything else will fade away, but his word will still stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to march on, church? Are you ready to march forward? The Lord shows us, out of all the souls he created, he chose us to be here for this time. And I know, I know that we can question why, and we can even complain about that if we wanted to. I know I have. <clears throat> but it is an honor. It is an honor. It is a compliment from the Lord. It's a very great honor and compliment from Him that He chose us to be here for this time, for this end battle. <laughs> this is how we suit up, army of God. This is how we suit up, church. This is how we suit up, body of Christ is we go into the secret place with him and we pour out our heart with him. We be vulnerable with him. We tell him that, yeah, we feel scared. We tell him how we feel about everything. And it is through that intimacy with him that we get our strength and our confidence and our courage. That is how you renew your mind. That is how you get revitalized. That is how you get your cup filled up. 
overflowing so that you can then help others as well and lead others. I want to remind everybody or inform those who are new to this channel since the last time I've mentioned this, but the Lord told me every time you wake up from sleeping, plead the blood of Yeshua over your entire domain. And he told me once daily, don the armor of God, just like physical clothes. This message is for the army of God. Plead the blood of Yeshua, put on your armor, and before you get out on the battlefield, you must go into the secret place. You must go into the prayer closet. What I'm hearing right now is the passage from Isaiah of the exchange, right? We give him all the crappy stuff, and what does he give us? He gives us the good stuff. He gives us joy, strength, comfort. Go into your prayer closet and weep if you need to weep. There's no shame in it. It just means you're human. It's okay. It's normal. Go into your prayer closet and weep. Confess to him what he already knows, that you're afraid of whatever it is. And I don't want to hear anybody. I, I don't want to receive any communication from anybody saying, oh, I'm not afraid. Bull. Bull dinky. Okay? Everybody's afraid of something, even if it's just uncertainty, even if it's just the unknown, especially in the tribulation. You got to be honest with yourself and you got to be honest with him. Go and be honest with him. He tells us in his word that we can go to him and exchange the bad stuff for the good stuff. We can exchange all the negative stuff and he gives us good stuff in return. So go into your prayer closet and pour it all out. Pour it out all out to him. Because I can tell you right now, what I poured out to him before I hit record and after hitting record, and now I'm already feeling better. I'm already feeling strengthened and comforted and encouraged. It's amazing. It really is. Go let it all out. If he's not your best friend yet, make him your best friend. He's the best friend. He knows everything. He is love. So that's the exhortation. Go into your prayer closet and really, really, really examine your heart, search your heart. <clears throat> Be honest with yourself. Be honest with him. And let it all out. Let it all out. Tell him what you're feeling. If you need to cry, cry. You know, on, on a physical level, on a body level, your body needs to release tears. There's like chemicals in, in the tears or whatever, like toxins that like your body needs to release. Like you need to cry. <laughs> and if you hold it in, at some point your eyes will actually start tearing. That's basically involuntary crying. 
because your body needs to get rid of it. Everybody needs an outlet. Everybody needs a release. What better place to go than the throne of grace? <laughs> I'm hearing the Lord say, enough with the false comforters. We all have things that we have run, ran to, you know, sugar, whatever it is, you know. Put that stuff down. Go to him. Allow yourself to be vulnerable with him. He is the only safe place. He is the safe place. Before I hit record, I basically just imagined him sitting here on this bed with me, you know, pretty much. And I just talked to him like I would any person. He is a person. And I know a lot of people, you know, don't know what it's like to, you know, have someone to trust or feel safe with, but he is that person. So, that's the exhortation. Go be vulnerable with the Lord in your prayer closet. And if you need to cry, cry. But start being honest with yourself and start being honest with Him because that is the only way that you get strengthened. You have to be brutally honest with yourself and with Him. And you have to release the emotions to Him. Pour it all out to Him and let him fill you back up with the good stuff. With the joy and the courage and the strength and the comfort. It's cleansing. It's, it really is cleansing. Crying is cleansing. Let it happen. Let the Lord's presence fall. When you go to him and you're brutally honest and you just pour out everything and you're vulnerable, his presence just comes. He just shows up. His presence drops down from heaven right there. His anointing comes. His glory comes and it transforms you. It, it cleanses you. It strengthens you. I hope this was edifying to you. I bless you all in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth.